Hello, my soccer universe. Finally, I get to do this video. It's about to get really, really, really hot out there. So I have the blinds closed to so have it, uh, you know, all the artificial light. Um, as soon as it becomes a more permanent state, I'm going to put a fan here, then all the jerseys here will start flying. But uh, that's going to be interesting too. I'm in a really, really good mood and I'm just waiting to do this video. I was about to go like after the Milan Derby win of Milan. Should I go all Milan here after this win at Juve? I decided not yet because uh, that win is not worth anything if you don't make top four. Um, but I decided I wear Milan and we have Milan double. I'm really absolutely thrilled with what happened yesterday in the evening with Milan beating Juve. Uh, if you're a Juventus fan, you might want to skip this video. Just as a heads up, um, because I'm going to gloat a lot on that. First win at the Allianz Stadium, uh, having the tiebreaker over Juve, I mean, you couldn't have wished for more. And on top of that, it was all fully deserved. That is the one thing that really makes me absolutely happy. And for once, one of Pioli's tactical uh, adjustments completely paid off with bringing Brahim Diaz. Uh, wonderful stuff. Absolutely wonderful stuff. But um, it was one of those rounds where, to be honest, um, things didn't necessarily go all the way for Milan because, you know, Atalanta winning, Napoli winning, yes, Lazio dropping probably out of the top four race. So it's really now only between four teams and I actually think that Atalanta will go through. So it's only a three-team race for two spots. But still, uh, with that win, it all went very, very positive. Last round was more positive for Milan on the overall results. Uh, cool, could have been perfect, but I think two rounds in, in, in a row with results going your way. What can you ask more? Also, we had a huge relegation fight between Benevento and Cagliari uh, with also quite some penalty controversy in there, uh, which I found uh, was also kind of an exciting uh, part for me. You know, I'm looking at Milan's schedule. I really want that Torino and Galleria are safe. That when they play Milan, they don't need, really need to play for anything anymore. Because I really am afraid of this last game at Atalanta, where I count exactly for zero points. But if Milan gets two wins, and we'll talk about that, I think they, yeah, two more wins. Top four is secured. That's all I need. Okay. Um, I owe you the result from Monday evening between Torino winning 1-0 over Parma, uh, which at that point, as I said, I didn't change much, but Torino puts a few more points in between them and re relegation. It was now, at that point, a three-point cushion to Benevento, and it was all between Benevento and Cagliari, which, with, with uh, the two teams, Cagliari trending up, Benevento going down. Um, and so we had the current round. Uh, it started out with Spezia and Napoli. This was a game that I was actually hoping at Spezia, who is a dangerous team, could actually do something against Na Napoli. They hurt them already once this season, but this time it was not to be with Osimen in absolute imperious form, uh, scoring two in the first half, Zielinski getting the opener, um, Piccoli pulls one back, but then um, uh, Lozano, after an Osimen assist, makes it 4-1 Napoli, relatively easy win, and I still can, can believe that they fire Gattuso. That is just, Napoli is one of those teams that are just so combustible. If they get their SHIT together, I think this could be a team that could really be threatening for a Scudetto, but I think they're going to blow it all up uh, this uh, at the end of the season, which is just a shame in many ways. Um, I did not watch anything of uh, Inter's 5 on win over Sampdori because honestly it has nothing, no bearing on uh, what's about to be, so my focus is really on Champions League spot and relegation battle. Um, in that case, Fiorentina Lazio kind of ticked a little bit both boxes. Fiorentina needs points and Lazio needs to get another, another win to get up there. It was actually, despite it being rather even, and yeah, Lazio playing in text marker green again, it was Vlahovic who made the big difference. And this guy is probably at the moment the most exciting player in Serie A at this very moment. He's scoring uh, freely. It's just he's scoring for fun. And uh, it's really all... Uh, Fiorentina is not that exciting of a team, but with Vlahovic. And I am pretty sure some 
big team will pick him up uh, soon and uh, he will not... It would be nice for Fiorentina that he stays another season, but honestly, I think he will go to another team. He scores both uh, win, uh, goals in a win over Lazio, a win that actually will give Fiorentina a little bit of breathing room uh, and uh, more steering towards a mid-table finish, where honestly, they should be at the very least. I think Fiorentina should be a team that should challenge for European spots, uh, in my opinion, uh, and lay it on, of course, Lazio getting a red card. Benevento Cagliari, you saw the table before, there was only a point between the two of them. Uh, basically a do or die match and it starts absolutely crazy with Liko Janis or in the first minute giving Cagliari a 1-0 lead. Um, however, La Padula in the 16th when uh, Cagliari was just a little bit unsourced, so the FF Freaky was quickly played and Caprari plays it to La Padula, not offside and it's 1-1 one, one. and uh, stays kind of back and forth, you know, as I said, the two teams are training completely wrong direction, although Benevento is really a fun team to watch on their day, because they are going forward, and Zagi actually is overall doing quite some good, good work. Pavoletti, after none is assist, uh, puts Kallir in the lead again, and then the big one is, uh, there's a penalty given, I think around the 80th minute, for Benevento, there was clear contact there, however, the VAR gets involved, and says, yeah, look at it, 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 it again, suddenly the ref, uh, Doveri, takes the penalty away and uh, huge discussions. Uh, you know, if this was happen, for instance, the evening match between you and Milan, honestly, it's, that would have been a talk time point for weeks. To me, if I, when I saw it, yes, uh, the Benevento player wants it maybe, but it still, to me, is a foul. There's contact there, and at that point, I don't know why VAR is actually intervening. That the referee then gets another way to interpret it. Yeah, he's doing his job jo uh, job there, but on honestly, I don't see the reason for the, for the intervention uh, in Saga, and especially the president come coming out with huge uh, kind of polemic st statements. But I have, I have to say, if I was a Benevento fan, I would be very much aggrieved uh, over these... Um, what well, was ha happening there, and then you lose it 3 1 because you are Pedro in stoppage time. It's a third pulling Cagliari relatively at ease as well. Uh, at the same time, Atalanta gets a win over Parma, all by expected Parma already down since last, last week. Malinowski getting the first goal in the 12th, and then the second half is just running up the score for um, for At Atalanta. Luis Muriel come, coming out. This guy is. Playing seemingly only half the time, but he's scoring like crazy. I mean, he uh, assists Pessina in the 52nd, scores the 3 0 in the 77th, and then it's a really, really fun uh, fine final phase with Brunetta getting a goal for Parma. Just just made late in A6, Muriel makes it 4 1. Som in the 88th makes it 4 2. And then Miranchuk, also um, Mur Muriel involved there, he makes it 5-2, typically at Atalanta, I think especially the 3-0, this was typically Atalanta, it was a free kick at the midway line, uh, and they quickly play it, and goes all the way in, Atalanta flying, and as I said, um, we'll see, Atalanta, I think, is more or less safe. Verona Torino, I think it was Torino, uh, not, not Torino, it was Verona, that was largely the better team, uh, it's Torino, who takes very late the lead uh, through Voivoda in the 80, 85, and I think they will get another important win, however, Di Marco gets an eco as a draw that neither one is really probably very happy about, uh, but I think the immediate danger of relegation is probably banned for, for, for Torino, whoever since uh, Nicola took over is actually performing quite well, I'm a little bit afraid, as we'll see, Milan is playing them very, very, very soon. Uh, Roma gets all the Europa League frustrations over the 5 0 over Crotone and Juve Milan. Whee! What was that game? That was a great game. That was a great game. Uh, this is one of. Maybe not up there with what happened last season when Milan beat Juve 4 2 after being 2 0 down. Um, but beating Juve at the Allianz Stadium and having Ronaldo be an absolute non factor in the entire game. That was sweet. That was absolutely sweet, I have to say. And it makes me so happy. I also, also thought that the spirit was actually quite high when, when I saw how the fans were cheering on uh, Milan upon departure. I don't know if that's something regular, but it seems like it went really all, all overboard with uh, the bus being sort of going through, through fans and Ibrahimovic going up front and cheering them even more on. Uh, 
lots of positive energy going Milan's way uh, in a very, very important game. And, you know, with Juve having a really bad game at Udine, but pulling one out late, uh, I had a feeling that Milan could do something. The big thing was that it was Brahim Diaz who uh, was scheduled to play for Milan and he proved absolutely vital up front there. There was no Leao up there, it was Brahim, him, him, Diaz and it was a great, great, great move. He has not been playing a lot but uh, and he seems a little bit fragile but to be honest, what, what, what they showed this time, he was a constant threat. Um, Juve started the game very aggressive. I think in the first 50 minutes they caught actually Milan a bit on the back foot. That was the one period where if Juve scores, I think that the game could, could go a completely different way. But um, Juve was very physical and Milan had to adjust, but then actually uh, took over physicality and usually won most of the challenges went Milan's way. I, mean, that, uh, I think it was statistic at one point in the first half, Milan won 70% of all the challenges and this is a clear sign that uh, the game is going Milan's way. Uh, it was not that there were many great chances, but if there were chances, although you were having more of the ball, it was Milan who was a little bit more dead dangerous and they get the first goal right before halftime when um, after free kick Chesney clears it very, very weirdly. Ah, before that, before we go to the goal, then we have to say the Chiellini chance where Donnarumma makes a flies past the ball and Chiellini has an open net and puts it wide. That, I think, was the point where I think the game then really starts start turning Milan's favor. And then Jesny on the other side makes a mistake. Uh, the ball goes to Brahim Diaz, who kind of fumbles it through. I think it was West McKenney. And then takes a wonderful shot in the upper corner. Uh, great goal. I would say it was a deserved lead at that, at, at that point, although the game was a little bit even. Um, Yes, uh, there was a potential handball, but uh, as you can see, I don't think it was there and I was happy that this was counted because that would, would have been a little bit a letdown. Second half, I was waiting for Juve to have a good chance and it really was not coming, but I was always afraid that Cristiano is going to do something. But he was very well taken care of by uh, Kier and uh, Tomori. And then again, Brahim Diaz with uh, more or less the last almost the last action of the, uh, of uh, his um, in the game. Uh, gets the ball on the box, takes a shot, Chiellini puts it in hand, penalty. I go in immediately, yes, penalty. Now we have it, two, uh, we have the two nil, then I remember, remember. no. I mean, he's not that great at penalties. And although Frank Hesse is doing well, this penalty was a disgrace. I mean, such a slow run up and then unconvincing going in the one corner. Jason is saving that one, and you saw the Juve bench. Come on, come on, they're doing it. Nothing was coming. There was a short period, and then yeah, um, Ibrahimovic had to come, come, come up with an injury. I really hope this will not mean a lengthy. It was just uh, to be careful. Uh, the Rebic come coming on, which at that moment I thought wasn't any anyway not a bad idea because Rebic is maybe a little bit more mobile than Ibrahimovic, and it proved exactly to be. What I was afraid is when uh, just almost the same that Kulusevski came on because he has a little bit this X factor, it's a little bit harder uh, to gauge, and then also Dybala coming on a little bit later, and, and I told you Dybala is gonna mess, mess it up. However, at the moment that Dybala came on. Milan was already tuned to tune up and it was right in a period, I think around the 70th to the, um, the 76th or so on, Juve actually tried to put some pressure on Milan, but Milan could absorb it quite well. Um, however, then there was a period where Milan uh, they had, had a counter-attack and then you could see, yeah, no, we're going to slow the game down, we keep the ball away from Juve, we're going to move left, right, da, 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 da. and exactly that's how, how it went. And then Benazer plays a wonderful ball to Rebic, who when you see it from behind the goal, it has a clear path to goal. I mean, uh, I don't know what the defenders were thinking there. And he uses that space and makes a wonderful shot from far out in the top, top, top corner. Hand. And you can see it. Just watch how he angles his foot to put it exactly there. Wonderful goal to Neil Milan. And believe it or not, I was so happy that you get this win. But my thought is, you need to get the third one. Dybala comes on. I know he's dangerous. Unfortunately, uh, after Jalanogli free kick, Tomori right in the face of Chiellini makes it 3-0. And then just hang on, that's a tiebreaker. Because that's a tiebreaker that I didn't count on at all. 
I know we have uh, Milan has the tiebreaker over Napoli, which is our, our, our regular, but owning the one over Juventus could prove crucial in things to come. And they hold on, although I think it was uh, Dybala who has one more chance, but they hold on and Milan not only gets the big win, putting Juve in desperate jeopardy, to be honest, uh, because Champions League is now really, really in jeopardy for them. But, you know, um, it's almost it's a bit like the Spanish title race. You don't really trust any of Juve, Milan, Na, Na, Napoli to really win it out. But for, at the moment, when I look look at the form and how, how the teams have been playing it as of late, Juve is the one that is really seriously in trouble. And so, yeah, ends with a 3-0 win. Big win, and Juve... Looking not good because look at the table now. Uh, you with three points off the pace with Milan, one behind Na Napoli, but crucially only a 38% chance to make it into in, in the Champions League. Uh, Atalanta, rather safe looking, uh, probably also getting the tiebreaker over Milan. And yeah, Napoli uh, owns, owns the tiebreaker over Juve too. That late pan penalty of, of in, in, in senior might prove crucial in that case too. So Juve really needs to. Uh, he can. He cannot be on level in points with any of these uh, if it goes for fourth or fifth place. On the bottom, uh, Cagliari, as I said, moving out of trouble. Torino moving a little bit out of trouble. They all have now a four-point cushion. Even Spezia, although they're also training down, looking uh, safe. It's Benevento's in serious trouble to join Parma and Crotone. Uh, with the game in hand that Torino has, it is against Lazio, so I'm, it's a little bit misleading. But at the moment, Torino would be slightly ahead of Genoa, uh, just on points per game and expected standings. There have been quite some movements, the most important from this Milan fan here. Milan moving in third ahead of Juventus. Then we have um, Fiorentina going ahead of Torino. Um, both seem safe. As I said, Cagliari, Genoa seem safe and it's really Spezia and Benevento with Benevento definitely having the short end. We have a midweek round and the fight continues. I mean, Napoli against Udine must win for Napoli, of course. Atalanta, Benevento. This is one. Benevento needs this win and Atalanta is probably the worst team that you can play against. That's why Benevento looks really, really in bad shape, I would say. A classic, Inter against Roma. And I'm probably not going to even bother watching much of it because for me it's all Sassuolo, Juve and Torino, Milan. And I actually hope I can watch this on two screens. I mean, for me, Torino, Milan is the... Bigger one, and I have to I have to say, I was at the moment I'm a little bit more afraid of Torino than of Juve, and having to play two uh, games in Turin in such short, maybe not that great. But then Milan is thriving away from home. That is in the midweek. On the weekend, two huge ones: Juve Inter and Inter. I think, despite being cha uh, cha champions, I can imagine that they really would like to beat Juve. And then you have Roma, Lazio. Probably the biggest rivalry in Italian football uh, right there. Milan has, has to play against a Cagliari team that I hope at the moment, at that moment, is already safe. They have a home game as Fiorentina, which can ensure them of safety. So if Milan wins those two, Milan is in the top, the top four. That's a good position too to be in. I hope it will pan out this way. Let me know what you thought. And of course, all those times that I have, have here subject to change, just to have that, that in mind. Let me know what you thought about uh, Serie A uh, games this weekend, how you think the bottom and the top four races will go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.